Don't be a sore loser, friend. Uh, that's what I say to everyone who finishes third, not second, by the way, third in the Olympics. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back. Uh, it's been precisely one week since my last stream. It's true. It's been a week. Missed you all, but we're back now. Uh, what happened? Um, well, if you've been following me on Twitter, which I get it, Twitter is a hellhole from which we all try to escape, but I still post notifications there and then I leave, then I run away. I enter, make my post, I run away because you don't want to be pulled down that rabbit hole of... Just actually, did I say Twitter or Twitch? I don't even know anymore. It's been a while. We're live. But anyway, Twitter can pull you down a rabbit hole that I've been trying my best to avoid. So I go there, I make my post, and I run away. You know, and that's it. Uh, actually, it's the first time I've logged in on Twitter since Friday, last week, Friday. When I made uh, the post, wishing you all a happy Easter, by the way, uh, which has passed since then. But um, if you weren't following me on Twitter, uh, I, I took a little break from streaming because uh, I had some scripts that I needed to work on and finish. And those were a little bit time consuming. I wanted to get them done soon because... I'm in one of those time periods where I have scripts to write and videos to edit and drawings to be made and lots of stuff going on at the same time. So I just needed some time to take care of that. Plus, I was sick. Uh, Wednesday, I wasn't great already. <laughs> I was not great. And Friday, I was going to stream, but I figured my voice, I really... 
wouldn't you know it surprise um i had this thing with my face going on that's not fully recovered but it's getting there um and i wanted to play the te the tenant or the tenants and i wanted to make my mrs mafia impression and be a terrible landlord but i didn't quite feel up to it and monday i just took a day off so that i could you know relax um and just focus on other things but we're back now we're feeling stronger some might say we're even more powerful uh, which is great sometimes you need to take a break for the soul and for the heart and for the illness uh, but we're back everyone we're back and we're going to be drawing um surely we'll start coloring today uh, I know I've been drawing. Well, it hasn't been that long. I've, there's been drawings that I've been working on for longer here. But we'll see how far we get into the drawing today. And with the colors. Um, maybe, I think I might still do this work on this drawing Monday. And that will probably be the last time I do it, whether I'm done or not. We'll see how far we get today. And then we'll take it from there. But uh, I am going to start drawing because we have a lot to catch up uh, because I didn't stream Monday and I didn't stream Friday, but we're here now. And you know, it, I'm serious because I started the stream on time. So that's pretty impressive for a Wednesday for me. Right on the dot, right on the money. Uh, let's switch to our drawing layer. Uh, <laughs> that's a different drawing, uh, but we're going to leave it on the screen because that's what I was doing right before I started streaming. And I'll explain what it is in just a second. First, we're going to pick some music. What are we feeling today? I'm feeling... Uh, what am I feeling? I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling, but I have a feeling deep inside, a feeling I can't hide. Uh, what should we go? Epic Dark? That sounds interesting. Let's. Well, you know what? We're gonna go with this, and we'll see how long we uh, survive with this playlist. We're just gonna see what happens. Uh, the Proving Grounds by Dragon Tamer. How about it? Let's do it. Uh, you know, in a way, you're proving yourself with this drawing. I'm trying to prove myself. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, like, so I was saying before, uh, you see this lovely friend here, a big friend, one might say, but he's just uh, a guy that I was doing for a drawing class that I'm taking about digital painting. And so I had to do a sketch layer. I'm gonna hide that layer. See, that's the line art, the ink layer. And then I did this rough sketch, two layers of rough sketches underneath, as you can see. And uh, that's what we came up with. I, this is, guy is supposed to be a villain, but he's supposed to be kind of like maniacal. And uh, that's what I came up with. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I worked on. Uh, actually, before the stream started, this is what I was doing. Um, before that, I was taking care of other things. I just noticed that I need to adjust these uh, elbows there a little bit, but that's fine, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, let's switch to our current drawing that we've been drawing on stream. This is our Shiva drawing, our ice mage, mage Shiva inspired for a different version of like Shiva from Final Fantasy VIII, the summon, of course. Uh, I want to add just some details to her uh vests here to the vest that she has i'm gonna add some draw some like little snowflakes and then i'm gonna start coloring uh because i you know i don't want the streams to you know drag out with the line art but i also feel that these streams are all about me getting my drawing practice in so as it doesn't matter how long i take like that's the most important thing and hopefully if people want to stick along for the ride that's great uh, but yeah, like I do want to add some just tiny details to our clothing before I uh, move on to, to the coloring. Uh, so I'm going to do that. 
And like I was saying, I was thinking that it would be kind of cool to... Uh, maybe I can bump the music just uh, by one. Just by one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be adding some uh, little snowflakes to our clothing. Um, just because I think they might be kind of fun. And after that, I will start with the uh, line. Apparently, we have rock music in this. We have rock music. Uh, okay. Not in a rock mood necessarily. Uh, that's good. I'm going to shrink it kind of tiny. Uh, like I said, I just want to draw... Uh, Something that kind of like just looks kind of nice, you know? Sometimes you just gotta draw things that look kind of nice, I guess. Uh, and I'm gonna do this pattern kind of like all over her clothing essentially, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, yeah, I was sick and I had to finish some projects. Uh, by the way, if you haven't checked the preview for my Sephiroth Joint Smash brothers smash bros animation uh, i invite you to do it uh, i think it's going to be a fun animation you know um yesterday i spent a good chunk actually i spent my entire work day editing it um and i think it's going to be one of those things that uh, it's going to be i think i like the animation it's fun you know i'm not going to worry too much about reception because there's one thing YouTube taught me is that there's no point in doing that but uh, I thought it would be interesting so I hope you guys check out the preview I hope you check out the full animation once it gets released uh, which will come out probably next week actually because like I said yesterday I finished adding sound effects and stuff to four scenes it was an editing day all day I was really trying to stay focused and just focus on the task at hand and it paid off I think so I'm thinking next week I'll make the animation available I just have to make a community post announcement and stuff like that um, and we'll see how that goes um, but yeah I hope that you guys check it out once that animation comes out because I really enjoyed making it it's fun I like the script for it uh, I think it's gonna be interesting. I know Sephiroth joined the cast of Smash Bros. a few months ago now, but animations take time, everyone. Animations take time, and sometimes you can't make things immediately. So I still think it's gonna be relevant, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, it will still be relevant. Uh, not that YouTube's been giving me so many headaches as of late that it's like, I don't know. Who knows what works and what doesn't anymore. And look who it is in the flesh. Well, we don't know that because technically we don't know what Distracted Pixie actually looks like. It's a mystery to all of us. But Distracted Pixie in the digital world, not Digimon, by the way. I don't even know if you guys know what Digimon is, but is here. Uh, Distracted Pixie, welcome. I hope you're having... A very nice day. I hope you enjoyed your Easter. And I hope you're having a nice week. How about that? How about that? That's what we say. Uh... By the way, I could copy and paste this flaky things but I'm not going to I'm going to kind of just draw them by hand because uh, I feel that's the right thing to do might be not could be the irresponsible thing to do but we're still gonna do it uh, uh, how many people do I have working on my animations distracted pixie uh, just one person just one person and moi well, uh, so I have two animators that I work with, but they work separately, like they don't work on a project together, they work on separate projects, and then I fill the gaps that need to be filled essentially. 
because that's, you know, no one works for free for me, by the way. Just <laughs> like uh, the animators that I work with, I essentially pay them a salary, uh, which is based on milestones, but it's still, it's an interesting deal. Interesting how those things work out, but it is. Um, I don't pay, pay myself a salary. I guess for me, I just wait for YouTube to give me money. Uh, but as we all know, that can be kind of incoherent and wild. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I work with two animators. Uh, one of my animators that I work with uh, is from Canada. Uh, the other one is from the Philippines. And like I said, it's they work on completely different projects separate from each other. Uh, and obviously I would love to have more animators, but to be fair, the more animators I would have, that would also mean more work for, for, from me. And I'm running a little dry on time that way. So, and also it's, it's what I can afford. It's what I can afford without like, you know, realistically uh, to be uh, responsible with my earnings and stuff like that. And to be fair, honestly, honestly, if I was going to hire someone else to work for my channel on any capacity, uh, it would be um, It would, it would be, uh, it would be uh, uh, an editor, honestly, because I don't, sometimes I really think like, I would probably get an editor and someone to like, yeah, an editor would be the first step for sure, because editing videos sometimes like I'm not, I do it uh, very much out of obligation and it's not it's something that's time consuming but I don't really enjoy doing it the part that I like to do the most is writing the script uh, Sonic Unleashed 2008 you come in here you don't say good morning or good afternoon you don't even use a smiley face and you just ask me a question like that uh, am I going to make Tails and Luigi versus Shadow Mario what what uh you don't even ask me if my day is going well. You just come in here and you say such things. Uh, uh, but yes, I am going to make that animation. But it's not going to be soon, you know. Uh, because the next project that I wrote the script for, which is going to be the next animation that's going to start development really soon. Well, it already started development because I already finished the script. Is going to be unrelated to Multiverse Wars. After that, maybe I'll start that project. Who knows? Uh, I was actually, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, distracted Pixie editing is rough. Um, I think editing can be like I've been editing videos for a long time, and I kind of just learned how to do it myself. And usually I feel that a lot of channel, well, not a lot of channels, but like big, big channels, obviously they have their own editors and stuff like that. Cause it's a time consuming process. It's something that not everyone appreciates. Like you notice if, you notice if uh, like editing on a project is like not there, you notice if that's missing. But it's not necessarily something that uh, people particularly comment on or whatever. Uh, with my animations, a lot of it involves leveling up audio, correcting, correcting audio, adding sound effects, speeding up certain sections of the animation, slowing other sections down. Uh, all those things that, uh, yes, are very much necessary, but not always the most engaging to do. Um, so it can be a little rough, but you know, you get through it. Um, for me, 
And actually, this is a strategy that worked well for me yesterday when I was editing. And it's, you know, it's a it's a repetitive process because it's yes, it's different sounds and different animations and stuff like that. But it's it's still very much. Uh, by the way, sorry if you heard that there are a huge motorcycles just passed by on my street. And it's one of those motorcycles with the really obnoxious engines because, you know, people are overcompensating for something, so they can't help themselves. Because um, it's attached to their man poop, I guess. Uh, but yeah, editing, like I was saying, can be very monotonous. Um, and, you know, you just kind of have to do it in bursts, but I would definitely hire an editor, I think. And then I wouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, Zelda Jigmin. No, wait. Zelda Jigmin. G Zelda Jigmin. Uh, hello. I'm doing well, but more, more importantly, how are you doing, Zelda? Can I call you Zelda for short? That would really make my life easier. I think it's the first time I see you here, is it not? And uh, is Sonic Unleashed still here? They just left. They asked me the question that they wanted and they left. No more questions. They left me, they abandoned me, and I am personally hurt by this, but I will persevere. Um, but uh, yeah, how are you doing, Zelda? So yeah, if anyone wants to work for me as an editor, I'll pay you in... Actually, I really don't want to spend money right now. <laughs> I'll pay you in positive feedback. How about it? You can apply right now. I actually need to correct that. Uh, positive feedback, how about it? To be fair, uh, yeah, it's... Distracted Pixie, you had that kind of uh, motivation. I think you'd be a great editor. I'm sure you have to edit plenty of stuff yourself. But no, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Uh, and ask you for that. Honestly, guys, if I could be 100% honest with you, like the, the thing that I like to do the most is seeing the finished product and like writing the scripts and dealing with that. I actually don't like having to like send emails, uh, create auditions for voice actors. Like that can be fun sometimes, but sometimes you, de you get to deal with like really not nice people and they're kind of like, Dickish, and then they don't send stuff on time and you have to keep reminding them that part's frustrating so having an editor slash secretary would be chef's kiss uh, 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 Zelda you recently used my Final Fantasy 7 walkthrough and played the entirety of it just last week and you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, what did you enjoy Final Fantasy VII? Did you uh, find it uh, to be an enjoyable game or not so much? And uh, do I plan on doing walkthroughs again or just focusing, focusing on animation art right now? Um, uh, yes, yes. As I've said before, uh, I no longer do walkthroughs for my YouTube channel. Um, because it's just not an activity that I personally enjoy as much. So if you see me playing a video game, it's going to be on Twitch on Fridays, and it's going to be for fun and like no pressure. And I just want to hang out with whomever's willing to watch me bubble and play a game. Sometimes I might play a game more seriously. Other times I might just joke around. It really depends on my state of mind. But yes, that chapter of doing walkthroughs for my YouTube channel has officially ended. And uh, yeah, I'm going to obviously keep all my old walkthroughs there because I still think they, you know, they're, they're good. But uh, that's kind of what's going on. Uh, but uh, thank you for, for, for asking that <laughs> so calmly instead of being like, you traitor, you betray, you're no gamer anymore and we hate you. <laughs> Your animation should be on Neo Ground. They shouldn't be on YouTube. You don't deserve it. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, to be fair, I haven't gotten that in a while. Uh, it's been a while. Um, 
but I might play Final Fantasy VII on stream sometime because I think it would be fun to do like a run for the game that's kind of like a walkthrough but it's not but just doing it live I think that sounds kind of to me that sounds kind of fun so I might do that at some point in the future uh, uh, Distracted PC you have edited a lot in the past but you never know if you're, you're doing well enough and you are slow uh, editing is supposed to be uh, kind of uh a slow process though right like uh, you don't want to speed up editing because then you're just going to mess up so i know like obviously if you work as a content creator of any sorts sometimes you might have to speed things up um and get stuff done i guess but sometimes uh, editing should be something that you take take slow I mean, it depends on what type of editing we're obviously talking about here, because it really changes. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, Zelda, you loved Final Fantasy VII, and you're debating playing Final Fantasy VIII or Final Fantasy X next. Okay, let's talk about that for just un momento, because I uh, have to tell you that regardless of the Final Fantasy that you pick, this is Final Fantasy Talk now, which is appropriate because I am doing a Shiva drawing, so... Uh, but Final Fantasy Talk, if I could get real with all of you about Final Fantasy for a second. Zelda, if you enjoyed Final Fantasy VII, keep in mind that both Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy X are completely different. I think Final Fantasy... Uh, Final Fantasy X might have some elements that are more in sync with what Final Fantasy VII was. Final Fantasy VIII is a very different game. Uh, so keep that in mind. I just want you to know that uh, if you do decide to play it. Uh, Persona 3, it's you, RPG gamer. You changed your name, but why? And how can I know for a fact that you are in fact who you claim to be and that you're just not a new person and you change your name and you're impersonating RPG Gamer. How am I supposed to know the truth though? How am I supposed to know what you really are? Who's to say, like Distracted Pixie might be someone else too. Zelda, I'm not entirely convinced at all. They might not be someone else too. Um, who knows who all of you are? Uh, I don't know. I'm the only one showing my face here, and I think Twitch should develop a function where we're all showing our faces, kind of like a Zoom meeting. Kind of like a Zoom meeting. I think that would be fun. Okay, here's... I am myself. You can tell I'm myself. Or maybe I'm a clone. Maybe the real Mike died last Wednesday, and this is a new Mike. But my point being is that... Uh, okay, hear me out. New pitch for Twitch. It's a stream, but chat is like a, a Zoom meeting where like all of your faces appear uh, in the corner, tiny, and everyone sees each other. How about that? I'm just saying it might not be a bad idea. You know, like it might be something that I think uh, we could all enjoy. Uh, by the way, I want to modify, I'm gonna warp this, uh, just a tiny bit just to make it like kind of like you know it's on her clothing so you want it to be a little warp uh, yeah. 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 Um, but I think that might actually be something that works pretty well uh, uh, RPG gamer sorry Persona 3 I need proof that you're RPG Gamer. So tell me something right now that only me and RPG Gamer know. Right now. And then I will believe you. Uh, but I was saying uh, uh, to Zelda, I think if you want to play just continuity, play Final Fantasy VIII for continuity purposes, you, there's a good chance if you enjoyed Final Fantasy VII that you won't enjoy uh final fantasy 8 because they're vastly different games they're vastly different games i would argue that final fantasy 10 is final fantasy 8 pardon me 
he's more uh, like it just has different uh, elements I guess um, like it's not uh, uh, the, the the fighting system is very different in a way uh, which can a lot of people don't like uh, I'm I like it but uh, for me I'm biased because that was my first Final Fantasy game so there's just a difference there I guess for me personally uh, but yeah uh, okay persona I believe that you are the RPG gamer because you mentioned I just dropped my pen to uh, you mentioned uh, Ace Attorney so that's definitely you uh, so if Final Fantasy 7 yeah uh, I think we've established that RPG Gamer is real and that they have not been kidnapped and replaced by this imposter Persona 3. I think the Stracted Pix is the same person. I see... I think we're safe there. Um, so I think that uh, everyone is uh, who they claim to be right now. I'm not myself, but that's just me. Because I've been an imposter all along. That's right. You didn't see that. Um, it's actually not worth that very much. A little bit. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, about being an imposter. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. That's not what I wanted to do. So, um, I've been putting on a show for my voice. My actual voice is like this now. <laughs> I'm told from Mario, everyone. I'm told from Mario. Uh, but uh, for continuity's sake, yes, you can play Final Fantasy VIII. And if Final Fantasy... Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. If Final Fantasy VII was your fi first Final Fantasy, it's, I'm not going to tell you if Final Fantasy VIII is good or bad. It's a game that has, you know, it doesn't have as wide of a consensus as uh, Final Fantasy VIII, a uh, Final Fantasy VII, pardon me, to be honest with you. Um, and... I'm going to so regret when I have to color this little icicle particles. I'm going to regret it so much. But I'm going to commit to it and just going to keep doing it, everyone. Create a copy, you fools. Um, why is that not doing what I want to do? Uh, the selected area is empty. Well, I don't even know in which lair I am anymore. That's the problem. Um, uh, but yeah, Final Fantasy VIII. I'm just going to give you... Okay, how about this? Uh, let's play a little game, everyone. Let's play a little game. So I'm assuming most of you are somewhat famili familiar with... Uh, I did not want to touch my camera, but I did somehow. I assume some of you, or most of you, are familiar with uh, Final Fantasy VII. You know, Final Fantasy VII, you're this mercenary called Cloud, and you join this uh, group called Avalanche, and they're fighting to protect the planet, because Shinra, this mega corporation, is ruining the planet. Uh, there's a lot of associations there with actual stuff that's happening in the real world, with the pollution and the planet just being kind of you know messed up and other bad stuff that's happening and it's something that you know is uh what am i trying to do here oh boy oh boy oh why did i do that uh it's something that 
you know, it's... It's not a light-hearted game, it's a very intense game. Um, you know, lots of bad stuff happens. It's not necess It's a game that, like, even the ending of the game is kind of inconclusive, I guess, so you don't really know. Did you triumph? Did you lose? What's what's going on? Uh, but it's a it's a game that I think has a lot of good elements. Now, based on what I've told you about Final Fantasy VII, about you know pollution, you're fighting to save the world, and there's this mega corporation that's draining the resources of the planet. What do you guys think Final Fantasy VIII is about? Like, if you had to take a guess, if you had to take a, and only if you don't know about Final Fantasy VIII. But if you had to take a guess, what would you say is the subject uh, that Final Fantasy VIII deals with? Like, if you had to be like, you know what? Oh, and I copied something in the wrong place. Uh, which layer is this? It's not that layer. It's not that layer. No. Oh, it is that layer. Great. Lucky me. Lucky me. Yes. Let's move it over here. Um, Persona, you can't answer because I'm pretty sure you've played Final Fantasy VIII, haven't you? Uh, based on how edgy uh, Squall is, you think it's similar to Final Fantasy VII? Boy, oh boy. I don't think anyone who played Final Fantasy VII would accurately depict the plot and just... Uh, yeah, they might make assumptions based on how Squall looks, but I would venture, I would wager that they'd be wrong and you'd be very surprised with uh, what actually uh, goes on in there. Uh, any other hints? To Does anyone have another opinion of what the theme and the overall plot of Final Fantasy VIII is about? Because uh, there's more to it than you might think. Actually, I'm really liking these uh, snowflake patterns on her clothing. But I'm glad I included that. Because uh, I think I think it might work. Uh, and Fender is here. Fender. Oh, Fender. How are you today? Fender, we're discussing what we think the plot of Final Fantasy VIII is. Which is very appropriate for this drawing, by the way. Like, it's on par with this stream. So I love this discussion. I love what's happening right now. I think we should keep going. But I want to hear what do you guys think if you've never played Final Fantasy VIII based on the plot of Final Fantasy VII. What do you think the, the overarching theme and plot of Final Fantasy VIII is? Because... Damn it, Persona, don't talk! Don't, don't say it yet! I want to hear more opinions, Persona! RPG Gamer. Not yet. The time is not right. The air is too clean this time. That is actually a very good point, Distracted Pixie. Uh, by the way, Fender, 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 did I ask how you were doing? I don't think I did. How are you doing, Fender? Um, okay. So, here's the plot of Final Fantasy VIII in a nutshell. No spoilers, by the way. This is not, I'm not going to ruin the plot for you. But in Final Fantasy VIII, and I have to take off my jacket because I'm getting too warm, so... Hold on! I'm getting so animated with this discussion that I started sweating. I'm not even kidding. It's starting to get really hot here. One might say it's time for air conditioner, but we'll see. Uh, but, okay, here's the plot of Final Fantasy VIII in a nutshell. Uh, Fender, you're getting ready for work? What time is it? Do you work night shifts or something? 
you know I'm happy whenever you stop by, though, so just I hope work goes well. But okay, the plot for Final Fantasy VIII is as follows. You are a student in a school, kind of like uh, it's a private school that uh, it's kind of like an orphanage in a way as well. Not really, but kind of. And you are a student whose uh, goal is to become a seed, which seed is like an elite mercenary force. And you travel the world and you're supposed to get paid to participate in these military campaigns and help out people who pay the school that you uh, live in, which is called Balam Garden. Um, Balam Garden is paid to send seed across the world uh, to solve problems. And you start as a student named Squall, and uh, you start as you're about to take your seed exam. So if you pass the exam, uh, you become a seed, and that's where the story of the game starts. And then the game at one point takes a completely different shift in direction, and all of a sudden you're battling a sorceress. And that's it. That's the plot of the game. And you're joined by supporting characters who are also students at the garden. Some of them aren't students. Some of them are just there. Some of them are teachers. Uh, there's some inappropriate teacher-student relationship there that I'm not going to get into. Um, and that's essentially the plot of Final Fantasy VIII. I actually like those ice crystal things that I put on Shiva here because it's like it, it distinguishes between the rest of her attire and yeah, I like it. So we're going to definitely call her there now. Uh, uh, Zelda, would I say Final Fantasy VIII is good? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, and I'll give you my honest opinion about it. Keep in mind, I am a little biased because Final Fantasy VIII was the first game that I played. Uh, it was the very first Final Fantasy game that I played. And I'm going to merge these layers, by the way. Uh, I'm going to merge them. And now we got the line art layer and the background layer separate, which is what I wanted. Um, uh, it's going to be an experience to paint them, but I really wanted to push myself with this drawing uh, Zelda, so we're going to just believe and we're just going to try our best. That's all you can do at the end of the day anyway. Uh, it is going to be something that is going to take a little bit to color, but I am going to use the magic one tool to make my life easier. So I'm going to duplicate my line art layer to have a copy. Uh, and we're going to... I think there's like an ice cream truck passing by or something because I hear music. Uh, this is going to be our coloring layer and the background layer we're also going to copy. Actually, the background layer, I think, might need yeah correction here. There's a couple lines that I didn't, for whatever reason, complete. Um, so, uh, Final Fantasy VIII was the very first Final Fantasy that I played, like I said. So, I'm not at all unbiased, I guess, towards it. Uh, and I hold it, it's a, it has a special meaning in my heart because of that. Oh yeah, Finner, you're from Australia, that's good. Uh, say hello to Ash for us. Um, I hope work, work goes well. I do appreciate you stopping by early in the morning before going to work, so thank you very much for that. But know that I am with you as you begin your journey and your day today, and I know work's going to be great for you today, I have a feeling. But uh, Final Fantasy VIII, I love... I think Final Fantasy VIII has one of the best soundtracks of Final Fantasy. Um, the music is great, but to be fair, a lot of Final Fantasies have great m music. I like the boss battles a lot. Like, I like being in the game and just running around and turning monsters into cards, <laughs> which I know is kind of out there. Uh, and I like the boss battles, even though they can be very easy. 
if you have the right junctions and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, I like those elements a lot. Uh, I think that my biggest issue with Final Fantasy VIII, and I talked about this when I made my walkthrough, is the fact that uh, Final Fantasy VIII, uh, the plot of Final Fantasy VIII is all over the place. Like, uh, the pacing is weird. You change from one thing to the other, and I don't think it makes sense necessarily most of the time. Um, you know. Uh, yeah. There's definitely certain things that I think by the way, I should have, before I did the line art copy, I'm actually going to do a little change here. Because there's just a few little things that I have to erase. Uh, so yeah, we're going to delete that layer. And we're going to put this as orange. And I'll I'll correct it first. Because there's, there's just a little bit of lines that I want to erase before I start doing the uh, coloring. Because then it will just be messy otherwise. And I see that I need to correct those things. Um, I feel the plot. Uh, it's it can still be a very enjoyable game. I just feel feel uh, your conversation on Final Fantasy VIII did not distract me at all, Zelda. In fact, it's appropriate because the drawing that I'm doing is inspired by Shiva from Final Fantasy VIII. So if anything, it's actually very appropriate. Uh, so you didn't distract me at all. Please don't worry. I I appreciate these discussions and I like talking about them. But I just feel at one point the plot of Final Fantasy VIII really like just takes a big shift, and it doesn't like they they offer an explanation, but to me that doesn't make sense. Of course, that's my opinion. Plenty of people will disagree. Uh, I also find one of the characters of Final Fantasy VIII, which I won't mention names, particularly frustrating to deal with. Again controversial opinion some people love that character i don't uh, i think final fantasy 8 if i was in charge the plot would be different for sure and you know i only feel that it doesn't have some of the same heaviness that final fantasy 7 had you know um uh, Fender is my Horizon Zero Dawn walk through the full game. I don't think I finished that, honestly. I think I did part of it. Uh, although I like the game a lot, I think uh, the main character is awesome. Uh, but it's, it's something that, you know, yeah, some people will love it, some people won't. I would say that you should give Final Fantasy VIII a try. The game mechanics can be a little confusing, even if you've played other Final Fantasy games. The, the way magic uh, works in Final Fantasy VIII and stats and stuff, it's a big thing to, to explain because you need to kind of like junction magic to your stats to boost your stats and make your character stronger. Characters actually shouldn't level up. I mean, they can, but the boost that they gain in stats per level up is minimal, like it's really nothing changes so in order to become stronger you need to junction guardian forces to your characters and then boost that's how you boost your strength stat and your vitality and magic stat and so on i could go on on and on and on and on about how the game works it's it's a lot especially for first time players when i first played the game i was a child and i did not understand at all even after watching the tutorials how the junctioning system worked and like now it's kind of like i understand it and it's second nature because i've played the game a lot but it can t be something that takes a while to understand um, uh, and speaking of uh persona 3 have i tried persona before i have not um there's something about persona i i have never really honestly to I'll be 100% honest with you. There's something... we I've, I've only seen trailers for the game, and I don't know why. It's something that, I guess, I never thought about trying. I don't know if it's about 
the way certain characters are or whatever. I, I just never tried it now. I don't know a lot about Persona. So if you can give me a quick rundown of what the plot is, I might check it out. But I honestly don't know much about it. So uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Uh, do I need to erase any more tiny lines? I'm not sure. Oh, there's a line there. There's always going to be little details that I miss and then I have to keep erasing. So I wanted to try and avoid doing that this time and just from scratch have all the line art figured out. But I know for a fact that there's always going to be little things that I miss and that I lines that are perfect and stuff like that. And it is what it is, but I still want to try and correct it as much as possible, I guess. Um, Uh, Fender, you've never played any Final Fantasy, but uh, do you need to play them in order? Not at all. Like like Zelda said, uh, Final Fantasy games, for the most part, they're not. They don't take place in the same universe at all. So let's. If you play Final Fantasy One, it's not related at all with Final Fantasy Two. If you play Final Fantasy Seven, it's not related at all with Final Fantasy Eight. They don't happen in the same world. They might be part of the same franchise universe but they're not related at all so you can play whichever game first and you won't miss out on other games necessarily uh, uh, like I was explaining just a while ago and I'm sorry I'm just looking for lines that need erased a little bit and corrected so, so that's what I'm trying to do right now uh, but as I said, be said before uh, yeah you don't need to play other Final Fantasy games and the plots are completely different for the most part. I mean, there are certain overarching themes that are there. Obviously, in most Final Fantasy games, in some capacity, in one way or the other, you have to save the world. You know, you are usually a young person. I don't think there's ever been a Final Fantasy where you play as a senior, which would be interesting. And I think there should be more representation of seniors in Final Fantasy, because uh, there's not enough. Um, but... You usually play as a young person, a lot of the times teenagers, but not always. Sometimes you play as someone in their 20s, and then they throw in some other characters in there. And you have to stop some bad event from happening and stuff like that. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I Final Fantasy VII is the most popular and iconic Final Fantasy, but there's other great... My favorite Final Fantasy right now, I would say, is Final Fantasy IX, which goes back to, I think, the roots of Final Fantasy a little bit, and I quite enjoy it. But again, not for everyone. Uh, uh, Persona... Persona 3 is a bit rough to start off, but Persona 4 is a mystery story. So, are you like a detective in Persona? I know it's an RPG, right? Like, there's still combat, like, tech typical RPG style of combat and stuff like that. By the way, I forgot to add a line uh, to Shiva's head here. Gotta make sure I uh, add that. we start coloring yes i think we're ready i think we're ready for that so we're gonna start coloring i think um persona is like an rpg simulator uh oh and fender final fantasy they're all open world for the most part final fantasy games are all open world you just kind of go around I mean, you have certain plot parts that are like mandatory and you go around, but you can just, if you want to just be running around all the time, you can. 
And I really like that about Final Fantasy. And it was the first game that I played that was open war like that. So that's something that's special for me. For me, Final Fantasy VIII is always very special because it was Christmas of whatever. I don't remember anymore exactly the year. And I remember getting Final Fantasy VIII as a present for Christmas. And I stayed up a good chunk of the night, probably until like 2 in the morning or something, playing it. And I did not know what I was doing, but I was enjoying it, whatever I was doing. And it was just a positive experience. Okay, line art time. Uh, I'm going to create another copy of the line art. Uh, this is going to be our coloring layer now, again. And the background line art, we are going to... I'm going to create a copy of it as well. Oh boy! Uh... Zelda, thank you so much for the subscription. I really appreciate it. That's really kind of you. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, but most importantly, we appreciate that you decided to join the stream and talk about Final Fantasy. I think it's great. Uh, um, with Persona, I honestly don't know, Fender. I'm sure Persona 3... Uh, is able to tell. Distracted Pixie, you think the music is jamming today? I just picked a playlist that's actually kind of like the the, the guy who created this uh, music. I don't think it's him anymore on the playing, but he, he definitely was inspired by Final Fantasy. And so there's certain things that are Final Fantasy inspired. And I like that. Uh, okay, so we're going to move the... Actually, we're going to move the background line art up there. And this is going to be our coloring layer, and this is going to be the background background coloring layer. Um, so background coloring. And we're going to leave it like this for now, and we're going to start with the coloring. Now, Shiva is blue, by the way, so we just have to find the right tone of blue for her. We're going to start with her face first, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, <laughs> Zelda, thank you so much for your kind words. I do appreciate that. Um, honestly, these streams are great for me, and I've, we've talked about this before. But I started streaming because I just felt it would be great for me to have that social interaction, interaction so that's why I'm doing it. And I felt that for the most part. Everyone would be pretty chill. So. Uh, I appreciate uh, you saying that very much. Um, so we're going to start with some blue and I'm just going to test out some colors first because... Um, oh, let me change the coloring layer. I'm going to change it to a green and we're going to change this to blue. Uh, let's see. That might not be the right one. Oh, by the way, I'm going to pick a color that's different for... Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm doing right now. One thing that helps me with white slots is to actually fill out a full color uh, with a color that I know I'm not going to use in the drawing. Now, Shiva is a nice summon, so she has very dark... Uh, sorry, very blue colors, like uh, icy colors. So I'm going to pick a red, which I know will form an interesting contrast here. But I'm going to pick a red, and I'm going to do that uh, for just the background, as you can see here. And so what this does is that it will be easier for me to uh, now like make sure that I don't miss any colors, essentially. Why is there a white spot on her hand there? That's probably something that was actually erased. Uh, I'll fix that because that's not, yeah, that's not going. Uh, I'm gonna fix that once I, uh, we'll fix, we'll fix that later, so it's fine. Um, 
Um, Persona, you've been playing Resident Evil Remake lately and you're still trying to get that rocket launcher. Well, I think you have to finish the game in three hours or something, so, you know, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you'll be able to do it sooner or later. For sure. I want... Uh, A light blue. Let's see how that looks. That might be too dark still. Maybe we'll go with something else. Maybe it's a little lighter. That color I like, so we're probably gonna go with that. Her neck. Uh, 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 most people start with Persona 5 out of popularity. Um, I believe you. I honestly, like I said, I know so little about that that I'm not going to comment because I've watched a few trailers and that's it. Uh, but as you can see here, just as a little explanation of my process, I do just like having that uh, one layer uh, that just fills the, the, the canvas with a color that won't be present in the drawing. Because for me, I get a little confused a lot of the times with like the, the, what's, the, the white spaces and stuff like that and things that I filled with color and other things I haven't. So it helps me to just kind of like understand exactly what it is that I still have to color and what I don't have to color. And those lines are not closed. Go figure. Yeah, I'm gonna color the hand by. Uh, myself. Um. Uh, Persona, the last time you finished Resident Evil was 3 hours 39 minutes. I'm sorry, that is frustrating. Uh, have you tried skipping all cutscenes and just sticking to... Oh, that's why the problem is there's a line here that's not closed. Oh, we can close it now, I guess. Just avoid all things that you actually don't have to do. And uh, maybe it will be a bit better. Oh, I can see where the issue with the coloring is, but I'll fix that later. It's not a big deal. Um, I think it's always a little bit, it can be a little bit frustrating, I think, when you're trying to beat a game in a certain amount of time. It can be not fun. Like, I understand why they do it. Obviously, you need to have a new challenge for new players and stuff. But, yeah, time limit things can be frustrating, I would say. Uh... Uh, Zelda, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. And yes, look away from the screen if you need to. I know the red is a very intense color. So maybe I should have went with something that wouldn't be so aggressive on the eyes. But once I keep coloring her, I think it will be a bit more muted and things will be uh, better. Okay, now we're going to pick this blue and I'm going to try and make it, I guess, a little bit uh, darker. Just a little bit because her... Uh, like her headpiece, I guess is the best way to call it, <laughs> uh, is going to be a little bit darker.
And we're going to make this line blue as well. There we go. Um, but yeah, speaking on time limits on games. See, one thing that I like about Final Fantasy is that really there's no time limit for you to complete the game. You can just kind of do things at whatever. If you want to run around and just, I don't know, do that, you can. And there's really no consequences for you. So I like that about uh, RPGs in general. That's not to say that I just want to be running around without any purpose or sense of direction, but I just think it's nice. I think it's nice when you have that uh, possibility. Uh, okay, we're gonna make her hair blonde because Shiva is blonde. Uh, but not to have to find the right yellow tone. We will obviously... Uh, let's try this one. We will obviously uh, add... Let's see how this did. That's not a bad color, I don't think. That's a good blonde. Uh, Shiva is very interesting because there's like her hair like connects to her eyebrows and her eyebrows connect to the hair. Very interesting design, but confusing. <laughs> kind of confusing. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's going to be fun. That part should be blue, although this part should be, yeah, because it shows her headpiece. Um, Persona, it's almost time for your yearly replay of Final Fantasy X. You play Final Fantasy X yearly? Wow, that's, that's impressive. Um, But to be fair, I kind of done the same thing with like Final Fantasy VIII, for example. So can't really say a whole lot about that because I've definitely done the same thing. Now the problem with using the magic wand tool is that I always have to correct these little gaps as you can see because it doesn't feel whoops doesn't feel the color the whole way. But that's okay, because it still saves me a decent amount of time. So I, I think it's worth it personally. Personally, I think it's worth it. Um Fender, you're off to work. Well have a wonderful day at work and thank you for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. Um we are all wishing you a very good work day. You start your work day as most of us are finishing it, I guess. Um, I understand that because there's. Do you guys have. So for, for Persona, it's Final Fantasy X. Do you guys have a game that you've played at some point in your life and no matter what, you always find yourselves going back to that game? Like you just play it and you enjoy it because I as problematic as sometimes I feel Final Fantasy 8 can be for me like Final Fantasy 8 is one of those games that I always revisit another game for me that I do that you might have not heard of it maybe you have it's called Dragon Force it's a game that was originally for the Sega Saturn and I think it's just this amazing game. Uh, 
and I think it's worth checking out. Um, but yeah, there's certain games I think that I would always revisit. So Final Fantasy VIII is one of them. Final Fantasy VII too. Final Fantasy IX as well. Uh, Dragon Force for sure. There was this Dragon Ball game that I had for the Sega Saturn called Dragon Ball Z Legends. At least translated, that's what it was called. The original game is title is different, but I uh, like that game a lot too. Haven't played it though in uh, a while. But yeah. Um, Hollow Knight for sure game I really like although I got that one much more recently um, so that's kind of like I guess in its own category uh, Russ Saniri hello how are you today Shiva staring directly into our souls yes and she's gonna freeze it she's gonna freeze our souls for sure uh, Persona you have several ones well let me know what are games that you guys like? You, you, no matter how many times you play it, you can always go for another run and replay it after some time has passed. A game that you always go back to, uh, I think that's definitely something that's interesting to think about. Persona, Persona 3, Sonic Adventure, Persona 4, Zelda Twilight, Prince of Arena of Time, um, and Resident Evil Remake. Those are good selections, Persona. I like your choices. Uh, I don't think Sonic for real. Wait, what was the username of the person who came to ask me about Sonic? Sonic Underground? No, something. Uh, I don't think they're here anymore, but actually... Uh... Sunday, for some reason I felt this urge to play Sonic Mania and so I went back to playing Sonic Mania because I own Sonic Mania and it's just a fun game to just like be like oh yeah I did like Sonic, no, didn't I so yeah Zelda, you like Zelda? Well, that's... Uh, I had kind of, like, established that one. Um, you know, it's funny, because I've never played a Zelda game. Well, I played very briefly a Zelda game that's available for the Super Nintendo on the... If you have the Nintendo, like, uh, account thing. So I have played that. Uh, 
Uh, maybe that's too dark. Um, a link to the past is good, you can never really get into 2D games. See, I actually quite enjoy a lot of 2D games, I guess. Uh, but maybe it's because I grew up with it, so it's kind of like for me, it's just, you know, it's what I had. Um, but even now, like, like personally, like I'm not bothered by 2D games. I think they have a charm to it, to them that's special. You know, so yeah, I definitely still enjoy them. Or like, I'm not put off by the fact that the game's 2D or whatever. You know. Well, I think Sonic games overall, I would say they're better. The 2D games are far better than, you know, uh, anything else that's kind of like been put out in terms of Sonic games. <laughs> so that's definitely something that I would say. Mm. I guess her nails should be like a dark blue. The most recent Sonic games haven't been that great, aside from Mania. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I haven't played them, so probably I shouldn't say that. But, uh, the only game, the only Sonic game that's a 3D game that I've enjoyed personally, like I did enjoy Sonic Flicky Island or Sonic 3D Blast, I think it's called in the United States. Uh, Like, I do enjoy that game. And I like Sonic Racing or Sonic R, as it's known, even though I don't think a lot of people like it. But for me, again, it's purely a nostalgic thing because, again, it's one of the first Sonic games that I played, and I, I think it's really just fun, you know? Uh... Okay, now I have to figure out what color I'm gonna use for her uniform, which is great. 
probably some dark blue colors and stuff. And Uh, you played Persona, you played Sonic Car and Sonic CD. I love Sonic Racing. Like, Sonic Racing was... I'll never forget uh, this one memory that I have of playing Sonic Racing. So I was on... I was in fifth grade, on fifth grade. And there was this thing in my school that was mandatory for you to do where you had to participate in like this um, uh, cross-country whatever nonsense they made kids do uh, event and it was terribly organized and they did it so that like kids from 5th grade to ninth grade were all running at the same time and they had the fifth grade kids like me in front and then they had it in order of classes so the bigger kids were behind of course the bigger kids trampled all over the smaller kids. i remember falling to the ground and busting my knees i still finished the freaking race because i only realized my knees were completely busted and bleeding at the end of it but i will never forget uh like being sitting on my parents couch my knees were covered in like peroxide and stuff and, and bandaged and I had my legs extended and I had mini pizzas because my mom bought me mini pizzas and I played Sonic Racing because because I had participated in a race I wanted to play I wanted to play a, a racing game and that was the only racing game that I had and I spent the day playing Sonic Racing Sonic Car and for some reason like that experience is actually like now just kind of endearing to me and it makes me happy to think about, which is funny because it was a painful experience, but it's still something that is like, I associate with the game, you know? So definitely kind of odd, but <laughs> nonetheless, uh, yeah, it's like an experience I have that I find I don't know, it's like, it's hard to describe, but it's just something that, like, I always remember. Uh, <laughs> it's true, isn't it? You're right, uh, Distracted Pixie. Yes, some memories become a little sour forever. And over time, some, some of them become better. So that's, like, now I associate it with a positive thing. Like, even though I was in pain at the time as a child, it was just enjoyable honestly like you know like now i remember that and i'm like oh that did happen <laughs> but it's not like a bad i don't have a bad feeling associated with it you know like i have a positive uh it's a positive feeling which is good you know it's good Um, I'm trying to decide just on the color for uh, the, the the piece that she has on her shoulder, just the little straps on it. Picking colors can always be a process. Um, but yeah, you know, like you... I think it's always good when you can turn a negative memory or whatever that you have and you can like kind of uh, overcome it and be make it become something that you look on more in a positive way, I guess. I think that's... I don't know. It's not easy, but I think it's, it's good when you can do that for your own well-being. I think that's important. So, yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe the cloth should actually not be gold because her hair is gold. Maybe they should be silver. Maybe we should try that. Let's see. Because every color, I think, related to her needs to be this just kind of like bluish. Uh... Yeah, 
maybe grayish even colors, I feel. We'll try that. Um, but yeah. Uh, you've never had a Sega Saturn persona? Did you? Were you born in the United States? Because Sega Saturn was pretty popular. Well, no, I do think it was. Uh, I think Sega Saturn was very popular in Portugal, and then eventually, obviously, the PlayStation kind of like took off, and <laughs> the Sega Saturn didn't have a chance anymore. But um, yeah, I think. Uh, It's interesting how the Sega Saturn never really took off in the US, I guess. Um, I mean, when I got the Sega Saturn, like, I think the PlayStation was already kind of like the. I'm gonna have to paint this by hand for sure. Because of all the little stripes I added. Uh, um, but, you know, I have very fond memories of the Sega Saturn. Actually, it's the one console because they're terrible at releasing remakes for those games or a collection of Sega Saturn games. Uh, it's the only system that I have an emulator for, and I haven't played it in a, in quite a little bit, probably since last year. But I still like putting some of my old Sega Saturn games uh, and playing them uh, on the laptop. Uh, yeah, the Sega Saturn was very popular in Japan, but that's Sega for you. Uh, but yeah, it never really took off, I don't think, in the United States. I think, at least in Portugal, I don't know what the experience was like in Europe, but I remember in Portugal, like, everyone in my school or a lot of kids had Sega Saturns. And then eventually everyone switched to the PlayStation, but the Sega Saturn was something that a lot of kids, at least in my school, had, you know? Uh, and I think it's it's a very like I don't know I have very fond memories of the Sega Saturn some of my favorite games are for the Sega Saturn uh, ooh Nights into Dreams oh I love that game I actually that game came with the like, there was a demo for it, but you could actually play the entire thing. It came with, like, the Sega Saturn itself. Nights into Dreams is a very pretty, just pleasant game. I like it a lot, so I'm glad you like it, too. Um, it's, it's a good game, for sure. Maybe that color should be a little different. Um, it is a classic and it's a yeah if you guys have never played Nights into Dreams you just fly around as like this I guess dream fairy essentially and you have to do things and it's just pleasant like I just think it's a pleasant game honestly you know so I think worth checking out in my opinion you know. Uh, but it's a, it's a very nice game, I think. I'll actually do that. Um, but yeah, some of my favorite video games. Uh, you have a sequel for the Wii. That's cool. Some of my favorite classic video games for the Sega Saturn include 
the original Resident Evil, so uh, the very first Resident Evil game, I got it for the Sega Saturn, way too young to be playing it, but I did nonetheless, what you gonna do? <laughs> and uh, so that's a very good one. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Legends, a game that I've played a lot of, for sure. Uh, my all-time favorite Sega Saturn game and one of my all-time favorite games, period, called Dragon Force. Which I would like to play on stream once, just to introduce potentially <laughs> you, my dear viewers, to the game. Like, you can't play it without an emulator, I mean, maybe. But it's, it's, a, it's a game that means a lot to me, and I might share it sometime on stream. Uh, I think it would be pleasant. Uh, um, what else? Um, Um, you started PC, you'd watch it. Well, you're very kind. You're always very positive. <laughs> uh, I have no concerns about uh, that, I guess. Uh, but it's a good game. Like you know, it's 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 outdated. The graphics are obviously old school, but it's still a game that I think can have well like I said I, I enjoy it you know and that's that's ultimately uh, an important and a very important part of it I guess Um, and so it's definitely a type of game that yeah I would uh, enjoy playing on stream I think um, so no one asked but I'm still gonna do it because <laughs> I want to so essentially the plot of Dragon Force is uh, you play there's eight different kingdoms in this uh land called Legendra and essentially the essentially the the, the 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 goal of the game is to conquer the other kingdoms and then you have to stop the evil god Mad Madrak uh, by gathering the eight chosen warriors of the dragon force uh, so essentially like you conquer castles you battle uh, in the you occupy locations, you have generals, you can give them items, you have battles with magic and stuff, you can have up to an, uh, 200, uh, 200 uh, soldiers in the field of, field of battle, 100 on your side, 100 on your enemy side. Uh, you can like build castles, uh, you can like fortify castles, you can recruit generals, you can like search for items uh, and then there's this plot around the game where you have to like I said, gather the chosen warriors to stop this evil god and as a kid I just really enjoyed that game, I still enjoy it now like I said, it's a little outdated but it's it's I think uh, one of those games that I think is uh, just good. 
you know, like it's just good. And um, I personally really enjoy it and I recommend it like I recommend it. Um, I, I don't know how good I am being right now at explaining how what the game is but it's essentially like this uh, you have a timer and during that timer you can go it's an hourglass and you can go around conquering castles and battling generals and then each time the counter re starts over you go back to your council chambers in your council chambers you can like do a bunch of things as your ruler uh, which for the time I think is pretty impressive that you could do so many things, honestly. Um, and it's just like visually, there's like this uh, 2D animation, like anime style cutscenes in there. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a game that I just really enjoy. Um, um, and I last time I played was last year and it's one of those games that I was saying that I uh, go back to from time to time uh, you should do some research about it if you're really interested uh, like I will most likely I would like to one day stream it I think it would be fun um, because I can make character voices and stuff like that too. But it's just, I think, nice. You know? It's a game that I think uh, delivers on just interesting plot, interesting characters. Uh, it's It's not perfect, I'm not saying it's perfect, but like each you control a general, like so you have the rulers and then the rulers have generals and then you control the generals in battle and you have to give commands to your soldiers, like different formations that you can use and stuff like that. By today's standards, it might feel a little bit basic, like obviously there's games that have developed that genre so much further, but it's very good for the time and still very interesting. And then you can use magic during battle, each characters or characters have different magical abilities, um, and it's 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 engaging, you know. Like uh, I I actually have you can't see it on the wall, I don't think, but on the I have a poster for the cover of the game, and it's on the wall there because I just really like that game. You know, it's just a. a it's one of those games where maybe, like I said, um, I don't. I, I realize now that not a lot of people know about the game necessarily, even though it's a game that I think did pretty well in Japan and stuff like that. Um, but I remember when I was in school, I actually introduced a bunch of people to the game. Obviously, <laughs> different times, of course, but. It was definitely something that I think a lot of people uh, enjoyed. And um, yeah, it was just a fun game. Like I love going around and just like picking a ruler and messing the entire game up. So like obviously the game encourages you to follow a certain path to do things and I do things just the opposite like I go and I attack the main bad guy right from the start because it's something that you can do in the game and the game can glitch out and mess up and stuff like that but it's still fun uh, and I yeah just I don't know have a a pleasant time just going around and just messing things up I think it's a little bit kind of like Final Fantasy 8 going back to Final Fantasy 8 so we're going full circle on this stream but with Final Fantasy 8 like right now I don't even really care about the story as much 
like actually because the Nintendo Switch version has this wonderful function where you can speed up things three times, sometimes I advance through the actual plot of the game in super speed and uh, then I like go back and I just want to be running around and doing things. Uh, distracted things you like playing sandbox games and not doing the main thing at all. Yeah, that's, you know, I don't know. It's... I think games that give you the opportunity to just kind of like do whatever. <laughs> uh, it's enjoyable, like, and a lot of the times you discover things that way by just exploring and going around and just doing whatever. And I think that's just like fun, you know? Like, I just really think that's fun. Um, so, yeah. I wonder if I select that color, if you actually... Mm, might work. Killer vest needs to be blue. Sure. For her outside this. Um, you've never completed Fallout 4 and you played for 400, 300 hours and never finished it. That's amazing. I actually... You know, sometimes in Dragon Force, I like to just like... Like, I let, let... There's this thing in the game that's called debug mode, where you can control enemy force and stuff like that. And they're just like throwing them at each other and doing a bunch of messes, <laughs> messing up the game that way. It's just fun. Um... Like, there are games that I've put so many hours into that I don't even quite have the notion of all combined over the years how, may, how much I play them. But I know it's a long, long, long time. <laughs> and I don't regret it, you know? It's time, as far as I'm concerned, that was well spent. Uh, Yeah, they're just games that are like that. You can just like put a lot of time into them and it's fine. Like you're not going to uh, regret it at all. You know, you're just going to enjoy it. And uh, not look back and be like, oh man, I wasted a bunch of time. Uh, Boo. Hello, Boo. How are you, Boo? How is your week going? It's good to see ya. How goes live in general? We're talking about games that we've put an awful amount of time into and we don't regret it at all. Of course, there's games that I've played for a long time and I regret it, I guess. Like, I don't know. Like, there's games where I'm like, oh man, looking back, probably not the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> But what can you do? Uh, Boo, you got your first COVID shot. Wonderful, congratulations, I'm so happy. I'm glad that you got your first COVID shot. Really happy to hear that. I'm scheduled to get my first COVID shot April 20th, so. Hopefully I'll get my first shot too. Um, Hope you are feeling good, though. Uh, I think it's exciting. I I'm so glad to hear that so many people are getting their COVID shots. I know not everyone's getting them. 
but I think they're opening it at least in the United States. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it's like in other countries right now, but they're going to open it to everyone in the United States in most places. So here in Pennsylvania, they opened it to the general public in April 16. So I managed to schedule an appointment for April 20th. And it was really pretty simple, actually. So if you haven't been able to look online and see what resources are available uh, near you, because uh, it's, yeah, it's important to protect yourself. And then we can all go and hug. Metaphorically, of course. Of course. Metaphorically. Because you still need to be very careful, even if you get the vaccine. But uh, <laughs> now this video is going to be <laughs> flagged as misinformation because I said everyone should go hug after they get their vaccine. You shouldn't do that still. You gotta wait a little bit. Tell enough people have it. Then I think you'll be okay. But don't quote me on that because I'm not an expert. Surprisingly, I'm not a COVID expert. I'm just a guy who was able to stay home. <laughs> and save my butt. Uh, distracted PC, you have to wear a mask because you work in a restaurant, correct? So yeah, please, you are very much at risk. I hope you got vaccinated already, Distracted PC. I hope that they made it available for you a long time ago. Uh, and Boo, you've played Warhammer who over a hundred hours in one campaign. Yeah, I mean, that's just how it is sometimes. You just play it and you enjoy it and that's it. You know, like I, I have the same experience, I think with, uh, for example, Hollow Knight, like my Hollow Knight save has like 80 hours put into it. I don't regret it. It's like one of the best games I've ever played, you know, and I enjoy it very much, so. No complaints from me. What is that? Uh, I want uh, maybe... Maybe a little bit of green to that part of our vest might actually... Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Hmm. What color do I want that to be, honestly? I like the green. Maybe it needs to be a hint of more blue. Oh. Whoa! Mm, please don't do that. Let's find out where the gap is, because there is a gap here some... Oh, there it is. Pretty obvious gap there. Uh... Uh... Distract the piece, you haven't gone back to a... Tables yet, fortunately. Okay, that's good. Uh, so what do you do now? Do you, like, work, like, behind the counter and stuff? Do you, like, do... Uh... Whoops, that's not what I want to do at all. Uh, do you do like uh, deliveries? Like, I don't know, like what's... I mean, you don't have to share, of course. I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm just a very curious person by nature, I guess. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to correct and paint these things by hand. I knew I would have to do that. Curses. But to be fair, I was the one who wanted to put the little design, so it's my fault. Uh, the started pixie, pixie currently unemployed. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that. But I really do believe that things will start looking up soon. So I believe that pretty soon you're going to, you know, 
be able to like I don't know like if you have any other ambitions and stuff um, but I think it's it's probably good yeah like I know a lot of people like yeah working in the restoration industry in overall is just I don't know especially in the United States because of just how the tip system works and stuff like that it's it's messy so I admire you for your perseverance that way um, but you know Maybe you can use this time to like, I don't know, try new things with your stream or, you know, try something new that you want to do, work on your art. There's always some good stuff that you can do, I think. Um, and you're right, it's probably much safer to wait to be vaccinated. Uh, that for That's for sure. I was really surprised that I managed to schedule an appointment to get vaccinated. I'm really hoping that I get there and they don't, there's not an issue with my name and they mess it up or whatever because sometimes those things happen. But uh, I am glad to be vaccinated. You know, I was thinking, speaking of restaurants and stuff like that, it's been a year. And a few months at this point since I last sat on a restaurant. Like I know here at least a lot of restaurants are functioning pretty much normally. But I just don't feel comfortable. Uh, uh, you know like I don't feel comfortable sitting in a restaurant. So like I get takeout. But I go in and I wear a mask and get it and leave. Like... Uh, and it's a shame because I actually like going to restaurants. Uh, there's this round restaurant called the Melting Pot where they make fondue that I miss going to a lot. Obviously, it's not a big deal. I'm just saying I enjoy it. Uh, uh, ooh, Kroger was doing walk-in vaccinations. Well, that's great, Pooh. I'm glad that you were able to go in and get your first shot. Uh, which vaccine did you get out, by, out of curiosity? Like, what do you know which, uh, what they gave you? Like, was it the uh, Johnson & Johnson? Was it the Moderna one, the, the Pfizer one? Assuming it was one of those three. Uh, I think I'm going to get probably either the Pfizer one or the Moderna one, I think. Because it's scheduled for two shots, so it has to be one of those two. Uh. Oh man, I'm going to spend so much time painting these little things. But it needs to be done, everyone. It just needs to be done. Uh. is gonna pour out if I do it like this unfortunately. Um you got the Moderna one? Good. Good good. I'm very happy for you boo and uh I'm happy to know that you got vaccinated and hopefully that means that pretty soon you'll be at least be able to like I don't know see more family members or whatever or hang out with my friends or just run around the streets screaming hug me I actually don't do that because I feel a lot of people will take you up on that and then you might be in danger uh, actually to be fair if I'm being completely honest yeah I'll get vaccinated but my life's not going to change all that much 
I'm still gonna be working from home. I'm still gonna be antisocial. Um, I'm still not going to want to go out super late because I want to be inside watching series or shows or playing video games. So <laughs> I'm definitely not one of those people who's like, oh man, when I get, uh, when I go get vaccinated, I'm going to throw this huge party for like me and my hombres and my chicas and it's going to be uh, great. And it's I'm going to kiss everyone and it's going to be, and we're just going to, rub our faces uh, on like uh, the subway poles and it's gonna be great and it's you know it's gonna be magnificent you know um, Zelda you got the two doses of Moderna I'm happy to hear that that you're fully vaccinated that's great news uh, I like it very much to know that uh, but yeah, going back to the, my previous point about like people just being like, yeah, I'm gonna be like, just. And I'm definitely I I see those people and I'm like, yeah, go outside. Ah, yes, do do stuff outside. I miss it so much. Oh, I can't wait to go to a dinner party. That sounds lovely uh, yeah I totally don't pick out the blinds right now and just stare outside and do a grumpy face when I see no uh, no I do like being outside but I'm not gonna be at dinner parties I don't think because it's not it's just not me you know <laughs> I'm very antisocial that way like I'm not saying those things can't be fun I'm just saying that at the end of the day I hate having to entertain guests or going to someone else's house and then being like, well, who wants to play Parcheesi, everybody? Let's go. Come on. Family fun. No. Uh, nothing wrong with people who are like that, but I am who I am. I've been a bit of a loner for a good chunk of my life. It's not that I can't enjoy others, I can enjoy good company, but a lot of the times, if I'm not doing what I want to do, I get a little grumpy, you know? Get a little, uh, just a little grumpy. But maybe all of you are social butterflies, I don't know. To, to be fair, to be fair, the idea of like going to clubs and stuff like that um, was never something that I personally enjoyed. Who wants to do that? Like realistically, who wants to be in this freaking closed up, super bumping music loud environment rubbing on each other everyone's sweaty it's just not for me i don't go out with my chicas hola chicas hola chicas chicas uh chicas you're gonna go out and party uh boo you gotta go well it was wonderful of you to stop by i appreciate it and i hope you keep having a wonderful day be careful with your chicas by the way uh, but uh, yeah it's I don't know I'm never gonna be an hola chicas type of person yeah I don't like bars either persona 3 I, I don't like bars either I will take a bar over a club for sure but because I don't drink what do I even go and do at a bar yeah Excuse me, waitress, can I, uh, can I request that you prepare your uh, non-alcoholic beverage for me? Uh, perhaps a nice warm glass of milk, everyone, so that I can 
partake in the festivities uh, with my uh, my chicas, if you if you will be so kind, please. Please, brewmaster, prepare it for me. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, boo, you're an antisocial mod. Well, you know, guys, we just we just kind of do our things, you know, like long as we're happy that's all that matters that being said a uh, board game night i do like board game can be board games can be fun if no one takes it super seriously and ruins the fun out of it also playing dungeons and dragons when i did do that that was fun but sometimes it's just nice to be able to enjoy your friday night watching a Korean show and then playing some video games until you get sleepy because you woke up early and you have to go back to bed. And that... That is the true... Uh, that's what I want to do. You know? Um, but yeah. And... Uh, don't get me wrong, if you're someone watching this stream right now and you like going to clubs and to bars with your chicas and your bros and all of that, that's great. I'm all for it. It's just you probably won't see me, you probably won't see me jamming on one of them. I won't be like, because eh, 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 eh. I don't know how to dance. I tried salsa dancing once. And boy, oh boy, did I mess up bad. The instructor came to correct me like three times to the point that I was self-conscious about it. And I was like, oh, please, Mr. Instructor, sir or madam, please go away. I'm getting self-conscious. Please don't make me do the salsa dancing in front of everyone. Because you have to, a cha cha cha, a cha cha cha. And it's like, well, it's not my fault that I'm self conscious about it. And my, I'm just, my feet don't lift as much as they should. Just let me dance my own way and go away, please. You're making me nervous. So nervous. Oh boy. We have so much to do still with this drawing, but that's okay. Because I was the one who decided, oh, let's add little snowflakes on our attire. That sounds like a great fun thing. And now that I think about it, I think maybe the inside circles of the thing should have a different color. So I'm probably gonna try and do that too. Wow. Wow, everyone. We did it. All right. Uh, I would say I'm liking how the drawing is looking right now. By the way, this is what I was doing before I started the stream. You might have not been here, but this is what I was drawing, this friend. <laughs> this guy right here. Don't let looks deceive you, he's a great guy. He just wants to eat some liver and fava beans. Um, but yeah, that's what I was drawing before <laughs> the stream started. So different, different vibes, I guess, different vibes. But um, everyone, uh, let me pause the music. This music is called Yin and Yang by Dam Damon Green, and I like it. So good job, Damon Green. We support you. Um, We went full circle. We talked about a lot of things and we ended up clubbing. And my, I think the general consensus that I got from everyone's opinion on chat is that everyone is a disco freak. Disco. Um, so I'm glad to hear that. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a stream. We're back. Uh, we're back. Uh, 
gonna take a break now though. Uh, everyone Friday I'll be back streaming again and we are going to play the tenants. I've actually oh wait, there's an ambulance passing by. There's an ambulance passing by. Hope no one's hurt. Hope no one's hurt. But we're going to be playing the tenants. Uh, I bought the game on purpose to well to enjoy to play it on stream and also play it myself. Mrs. Mafia and their uncle are making a comeback, and we're going to play that, and it's going to be relaxing and fun. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, hopefully, no more sickness, no more getting busy for me. So I will be here at five p.m. Eastern time with the scheduled programming. Um, so I hope to see you then. I hope you join. If you can't, that's okay. The video, blog, whatever thingy is going to be here for you later. But I'm afraid it's time for me to head out because I got to go party with my chicas. Everyone, it's time to party with my chicas. Hola, chicas. So it's time to say goodbye for today. Thank you, everyone who tuned in. Uh, thank you, Zelda, for the subscription. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Sonic Unleashed 2008 was here to ask one question, but we still support it. Thank you for all the conversation, everyone. It's wonderful to hang out with all of you again. Um, the Strike the PC, thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. All of you... Thank you, friends. I will see you all Friday, hopefully, for the tenants. And now I'm going to do some disco dancing. So goodbye.